Hey, everybody. Welcome to a brand new format of the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Pekulski. We know how valuable your time is. Sometimes it's not possible to get to all your favorite podcasts and listen from the beginning to the end. So what we've done is we've decided to create a brand new format that allows you to get all of the high impact habits, all of the most valuable information in just a short, condensed amount of time. And ultimately, when you hear this podcast, and you know how much you love this information, you have the opportunity then to go back and listen to the entire conversation with the guest. So I hope you love it. Uh, if you do love it, I would love to love it if you would subscribe to the Muscle Intelligence Podcast, share this podcast with at least one person you know and love as we continue to spread this message of intelligent muscle building and ultimately using muscle building and intelligent movement to live to a ripe old age and extend our lifespan. So without further ado for me, enjoy the Muscle Intelligence Podcast. People are just throwing the word overtraining out, assuming you're doing too much volume means you're not actually training or adapting, which just makes absolutely no sense. So let's talk about a framing in how we're going to ultimately understand how to make a decision, right? So instead of mindlessly following someone's protocol to say, if you're doing more than two sets for this body part, you're doing too much. That's complete nonsense. If you're doing more than five sets for this body part, you're doing too much. That's also complete nonsense because ultimately there's a lot of factors that go into what actually determines if you're doing too much for your body. And most people only see one side of the coin, right? Most people see the training side of the coin. And while that is an important factor, of course, there has to be other sides of the coin because if, if training is only as useful as my ability to adapt, then we have to think of, okay, well, what is my ability to adapt, right? So what is my recoverability? What is my body's ability to recover from any type of stress? So if you think of exercise in terms of simply being a stress that you are intentionally subjecting your body to, then you have to look at, okay, well, what am I actually stressing? Because people think, well, exercise is just exercise stress. Well, no, if you look at it system by system, you can tax these systems differently, can't you? So if something's very heavy, that may be a very different stimulus than something that is high volume, which is very, very different stimulus than something that is very dense in nature, meaning a lot of sets and reps with a lot of of rest, compared to something else that may be aerobically or anaerobically taxing. And all those have a different uh, system that's being taxed. And again, maybe all the systems are being taxed in some proportion, but as you could probably acknowledge, the proportion of each system being taxed will be different. So the nervous system maybe have huge amounts of tax. And then the muscular system may have big amounts of tax on a different day or or little, you know, and you have to look through, okay, do I understand the signal that I'm subjecting my body to? And if I do, well, what uh, is that actually challenging inside my body? And here's the crazy thing. The same workout for me is not going to elicit the same stress to you, is it? Because where we are currently our, our body's current ability to adapt system by system is different based on genetics and our history and also our physical capability, right? But most people, like on the order of, let's just say most, I want to throw a number out there, but a lot, uh, don't make any progress. So they make a little bit of progress, then they'll get frustrated due to lack of progress. So they'll feel like, tell me if this sounds like something you've experienced before, they'll feel like they're, they're training hard and not getting the results for the amount of work they're putting in. Or maybe they're training hard and it was working for a little bit. All of a sudden, now my body looks like it's getting inflamed. Or I'm getting fatter. I'm still doing the same thing. I'm not really sure why. Right. Because if you're constantly stressing the same system in the same way, the body goes, you're not giving me enough time to adapt. Or the body goes, you're not giving me enough si- stimuli to need to adapt. Therefore, I'm just going to stay the same. So there has to be this intentional progression of the systems and, and also in, in maybe like a, an undulating way. So progressing one system, pulling back, progressing one system, pulling back. Right. So it's never just, and what, and I should say also then when you're pulling back on one system, let's say I'm pulling back on my hypertrophy training, I can also push a different system, right? Why can't I do a metabolic based workout if it has a, a significantly less hypertrophy based workout, right? If I'm, if I'm, uh, so hypertrophy based is like, I'm trying to challenge the muscular system, right? Which is ultimately some integration of the neuromuscular system, the nervous system and, and the muscles actually like contractile ability. And then the other end of it is, well, I could do a, a metabolic based signal, which is, which is low on the nervous system stimuli and low on the muscular based stimuli, but highly demanding to my energy systems, maybe highly demanding to my aerobic system or anaerobic or cardiovascular systems, right? You could train really hard every day of your life, I think, 
maybe, maybe with maybe with a few days off in between. But for the most part, train really hard, subjectively, quote unquote, hard for the rest of your life, but always training a different system, right? So if one day I do a strength-based system, which is super low rep, maybe low volume, high load, the next day I do a hypertrophy-based signal, which is maybe higher volume, mid to high volume. And then another day I do a really high metabolic-based signal, which is really, really aerobic or anaerobic in nature and cardiovascularly challenging. Well, then maybe I could, I could repeat day one on, on the next day because it's a different type of signal. Now, it completely depends on your ability to recover from those signals, which I'll talk about, but there's no such thing as saying, oh, I'm overtraining because I'm training seven days a week. I think you could absolutely figure out a way to do that if you really wanted to be super intentional with your recoverability modalities. One of the things that you may want to start exploring in yourself, and this this for many people, but probably not listening to this podcast, but for many people is a very far-fetched idea. Start listening to your body. The way you learn to understand what your body needs, and this, again, this is so subjective, right? But learn to listen and feel. And once you've been doing it long enough, and that's also subjective because some people get it quickly and some people take forever based on their ability to connect with their body. You can often tell what your body needs. Sometimes you don't want to give it to it because I need more sleep, but I got stuff to do. Or I want more food, but following a diet, you know, the, the, but you can listen to what your body needs. And ultimately, if you start to listen carefully, we'll say, rather than um, mindlessly start to actually pay attention to the signals your body's giving you, you could probably li- r- know really well what your body wants or needs. And, and ultimately, you may not know all the different recovery modalities that exist. So there's a limitation there. But certainly, you could start to have an understanding of, you know, like, and I do this all the time, you know, I feel like I need some extra carbohydrates today. I trained really hard in the gym. I crushed it. I need some extra carbohydrates. Or you know what? I'm really sore today. Maybe I need some extra protein. Or you know what? I just feel like a little, little tired, a little lethargic, a little brain fog. I'm going to allow myself to have a nap, right? Like, oh, and again, I get the, the high achiever mindset of like, I can't do that stuff. I just can't do that, man. I got to follow my diet. My coach said follow the diet. I get a little bit this time. I got shit to do during the day. I can't do it. Yeah, but then you need to acknowledge that just that's just your inability to actually do what your body wants or needs, right? Or your lack of desire to do what your body wants or needs. So hopefully this starts to make sense. Like first step one takeaway from today is you got to understand what you're doing in the gym. Because just because I'm doing 10 sets or 20 sets or 30 sets of anything, and maybe I'm doing three body parts or one body part, Am I actually eliciting a muscular-based progressive stimuli, right? So how many reps am I doing? How many sets am I doing? What percentage of load am I using? Because that th- those three things, if you guys are taking notes on this, are going to significantly impact my time to recovery and the modality that will be most useful for me to, re- to recover. Meaning, do I need more calories? To be honest, most people in powerlifting don't need more calories, right? Because it's so calorically... Uh, limiting. It's, it's very limited with the amount of caloric expenditure it, it, it demands, right? If you're doing sets of one, like, or three, the amount of caloric demand is, is very low, but the demand on the nervous system is enormous. So then maybe we have to do some, some recovery modalities that are impacting the nervous system, right? More effectively. Maybe it's contrast, uh, baths, or maybe it's cold therapy, or maybe it's saunas, or maybe it's meditation, maybe it's breath work, things that directly stimulate or even time in nature directly stimulate the nervous system. Whereas if I'm doing something that's a, that's a hypertrophy or no, sorry, a metabolic based stimulus, I probably don't need a huge amount of recovery in the nervous system. Maybe some, if I'm going to deep levels of fatigue, but if I'm just doing a typical, you know, metabolic based high intensity workout or, or a couple hours of, of zone two cardio, my, my recovery requirement seemingly to the nervous system is not enormous, but it may be significant to inflammation and oxidative stress and you know, I don't know, the, the liver and energy production. So maybe I need to eat more calories that day too, but, or some more on that day than I even would on a strength-based or hypertrophy-based program, right? And I think most people don't understand that. I think uh, throwing words around like overtraining is just, is just ignorant. I mean, in general. And when people say, oh, two sets is enough. Well, who's doing the two sets? Because could you acknowledge that your ability to do two sets of anything may be different than my ability to do two sets or something? And if you think of like, each subsequent rep being an opportunity to subject the muscle to tension, damage, and stress over a specific amount of time. Meaning if I do one rep, 
most people, or not, I should, this is a generalization, but let's say many people aren't actually using the muscle they're trying to train through 100% of the rep. They may be using it through some lesser percentage, 30, 40, 50, 60%, but they're certainly not doing it 100% of the time. And, and, and also acknowledging that every type of exercise, every type of resistance actually subjects the body to a different percentage of load at different times, meaning this thing called uh, resistance profile, which basically means uh, a weight is not the same amount of force against my body at any point in the range. It's constantly changing. So even though I have a 30 point, uh, 30 pound dumbbell in my hand or a hundred pound dumbbell in my hand, it doesn't always exert a hundred pounds of force to the muscle I'm training based on distance and speed ultimately. Right. So we got to think about those things like time ma- matters. Um, and so most people in, in general should start there and say like, okay, well, am I actually making the most of every rep that I'm doing? Cause I can tell you with a hundred percent certainty, the answer is absolutely not. Why? Because it's really, really hard to do things well, right? And this is why most people who, not, again, hate generalizations, but many people um, don't want to train with intelligence, right? They want to train mindlessly because it's too hard for them to slow down. They don't have the fortitude to slow down and control the weight and actually allow the muscles to be challenged. Mentally, they don't have the fortitude. They don't have the focus. It's really, really hard to stay uh, intentional to stay present in discomfort as you intentionally move closer and closer into discomfort. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed today's high impact summary. If you want to go deeper into any of the content you just heard, don't forget to check out the full length show that was just released. You can head over to muscleintelligence.com slash podcast to check out that in all of our podcasts. If you want to subscribe so you never miss a podcast, head over to your favorite podcast platform, whether it be Spotify, Apple, YouTube, any of the amazing places where great podcasts to listen to, you can head over there and subscribe. If you want to join our email list to get free information where I'm constantly providing value, I'm constantly providing insights into the information learned on these podcasts, you can head over to muscleintelligence.com slash learn to grab a free guide on ultimately living your greatest life. Thank you for being here. And as always, live your greatest life in a body that you absolutely love. Thank you so much for tuning into Muscle Intelligence. If you enjoyed today's episode, please be sure to share it with at least one person you know. Make sure you're subscribed so you never miss an episode. This podcast is for information purposes only. The statements and views on this podcast are not medical advice. This podcast, including Ben Pikulski and the producers, disclaim responsibility for any possible adverse effects from the use of information contained herein. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. This podcast does not make any representations or warranties about guest qualifications or credibility. This podcast may contain paid endorsements or advertisements for products or services. Individuals on this podcast may have a direct or indirect financial interest and products or services referred to herein. If you think you have a medical problem, consult a licensed physician.